Okay. Uh, this is state of mind. How you guys doing? Um, I have a, a guest today who I'm going to get to know a little more. She's, she's on General Hospital. If you like what you see, hit the button here and subscribe, please. We want to get to 100,000 subscriptions, which is hallelujah. Um, actress, big time model, writer. She's like a jack of all trades. But we have th a few things in common. And that is, um, she's a big time model, and I'm a failed model. I mean, big time Aww. failed. And I'll get into that with you later. And uh, she's an actress, and she's on General Hospital. And her birthday is the same as my daughter Kaylee's birthday, September 18th. Yeah. So that's amazing. How's that? So here, here she is. The illustrious, I looked that up because I didn't know what it meant. Illustrious. The illustrious <laughs> Tanisha Harper. How you doing? Oh, well, thank you. Well, that was a nice, warm welcome introduction. Right. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, you were born in? Tokyo. Wow. Yeah. How was Tokyo? Well, from what I remember, which was, I don't remember a lot. Uh, How long did you, you live? <laughs> I lived there for a few years. My my family lived there for quite some time, and then I was born, and then they decided to take all the fun away and move as soon as I was born. So mm. I didn't get to spend too much time there, but um, myself. But you know, <laughs> I don't travel. I'd like to go to Japan. I'd like to go to Europe. I have a a, a big problem. Uh, I don't know. Most people know is you know I'm bipolar. I'm I have a, I, Everything. <laughs> I've gotten off two planes because of claustrophobia. Oh, really? Okay. But I'm, fl I'm flying uh, to Graceland. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Graceland. Ooh. Graceland. Uh, to do a state of mind and to do some other things. So it, we'll see how I do because I've been doing great since the pandemic. I had a rough time during the pandemic. But I'd love to go to Japan. I take my, I do all kinds of social media. That would be fantastic. It's incredible. I go back. I, I try to go back as often as I can. Obviously, it's been a few years since the pandemic, but um, it's amazing. It's just such a different culture, and I think it's a culture that I resonate with. Um, like in what way? What was how they are um, in terms of uh, you know they're very <laughs> neat and orderly and you know. Put together and things are well thought out and methodical and really um and i love that i yeah. absolutely love that um i love the style of dress um my middle name is mariko so it makes which mariko san which is what japanese is mariko -san. Uh, what does it mean does it mean anything or uh, just the name it's like circle of life the one ah. yeah so um it's, you know, I feel like I have a lot of that culture um, still within me. And even at my parents' house, they still have a lot of their furniture from Japan. So it's very heavily influenced by Japanese culture. Yeah. Um, Is there a lot of people? There are a lot of people. And you have different sides to Japan, too, which is really cool. You've got the city kind of side, like Tokyo, for example, which is a big, bustling city. It's, you know... They are on top of everything, electronics, fashion. They are at the forefront of it. And then you go to a place like Kyoto, which is very traditional, where you still see many of the people dressed in the traditional clothing. Oh, which really? Which is amazing with the makeup, the hair, everything. It's phenomenal. And, you know, it's just as beautiful, but then it's more of a, I guess you could say kind of a, the country yeah, yeah. <laughs> portion, you know, more yeah. more land, not city. Uh, it's incredible. Um, and how many hours on a plane to get there? Um, that I don't know. I can't remember because I usually be. stop along the oh, way somewhere. Did? Yeah, I might stop somewhere else before going. Um, it's it's far, maybe nine hours. No, maybe 18 good. hours. Yeah, it's far. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, I, <laughs> I would, I know it's worth it. Yeah. It's just, I got to get myself healthy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely, you got to prepare, you know, Fly, flying in general 
is a lot. I, get I just you. think for for anybody. Yeah. I think because with me, uh, having had a career as a model, I was on a plane all the time, so I've gotten used to it. But there are times now where I don't fly as much as I used to, or I'm like, oh, I just want to get off the plane. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. I get, I get it. I get it. And then, <laughs> and then with mental illness, you got to double that. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible, uh, it's just terrible. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gotten off a plane in a long time. That's cool. um, well, did you get off the plane like while it was mid air? No, no. Or they had I, to land? I tell them open the doors. Okay. It's still on ground. Okay. And they don't. One one time was at, during nine eleven. Oh wow! And I said you got to open the doors now. And then my friend said, "He's sunny." <laughs> and they're like, "I don't care. We're not opening the doors." And I said, "Well, he's he's bipolar." And then. They opened and the cops came and the whole thing. Oh, wow. They should have opened it. If somebody's not feeling well, they should open yeah, it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And then the, the yeah. other time was with my kids. And that was really terrible because we we're all ready to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I remember the guy sat in front of me and his, like, his seat was right here. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, no, 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 no. And I got up and said, Paula, no, no, baby. No, Paula, let's go. Mm -hmm. You had to take my kids off. And okay. It's it's just uh, it's not good. Let's talk about. I want to talk about. I'm really. I, I want to talk about modeling. Okay. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. How can I say this? I tried to be a model. Mm -hmm. And I I would have done anything to be half successful as you. Honestly, I would have. <laughs> at that time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe because of that need so bad, that was one of the reasons it drove me to a mental institution. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do the go sees. <laughs> All the things, yeah. you know what I mean? Little comp cards, yeah, all that, all those comp cards, mm -hmm. and 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 but just you know, I'm I'm five nine, mm -hmm. and the, you know, you come in, it's like, damn, you're like with heels, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, it was really tough to not make it in, in that. Then I got into acting, and then from acting, it w it wasn't happening either, and I think a lot of that has to do with. I know I'm giving you a lot right now. <laughs> Taking it in. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with, I was thinking about this as I was working out. When you stop caring what people think, and I know I talk about it all the time in state of mind, but I'm going to keep talking about it because it's, it's, it's happening to me now at 60 years old, people, 59, where I'd, I would really stop caring what people think. Mm -hmm. I think if you care too much what people think, it can really mess you up. I 100% agree. Where do you stand? Uh, I, I think that's actually very important. That has been something that has been quite debilitating for me my whole life. Ooh. The, the, that industry in particular, and, and this also you know, happens within the entertainment industry as well, y you're... Everything is based on your looks, you know, for as a model. It's based on your looks. Your, you know, are you tall enough? Are you skinny enough? Are you, you know, proportioned enough? Yeah. Or whatever it is. And I think uh, when I started, I started when I was about, uh, maybe about 14 years old. Oh, really? 14? Yeah. So I started at 14. And at that time, it was very cute and innocent. I was doing the commercial type of stuff. I lived in Arizona. And you were discovered in a mall, am I correct? Uh-huh. Yeah, like at a, at a mall by a, an agent. And, um, you know, m at first my mother was not too keen on me doing it because she just heard all of the bad things. How tall were you at 14? I I probably was around five eight Damn. maybe at the time five seven yeah. you know and then I grew but um but it was very innocent at that time I was doing like Kmart and you know Dillard's department stores very innocent sweet things and then as I started to get older you know things changed all of a sudden you're you're doing swimwear and then they want you to travel and go to New York and go Damn. to all these places and that's when things change you start hitting a higher level and you start dealing with you know 
people that want more out of you and they start to take that kind of innocence out of it. And, um, you, I remember when I moved, I moved after college, I moved to California and I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to do modeling there and then, you know, just see what, where it takes me because I was interested in writing and this and that. I didn't know exactly what I want to do, but the modeling was always there. It was a lucrative business for me so I kept doing it but things started to change and I got here it was you are too uh you're too skinny which is interesting yeah so in in California they liked the girls to be a little healthier looking you you. know more lifestyle more athletic and that's just something like I, I can't help that it wasn't as if I had always tried to be skinny I was just a skinny kid yeah so it's funny because you know where you have one spectrum models are starving themselves and doing anything to be thin. And then here I was having to gain weight, had to hire a nutritionist to, wow. to gain weight just so I could work in California to fit that mold yeah. of what they wanted. Yeah. And then going to, you know, auditions. And they, they tell you straight up to your face sometimes at these auditions, you know, uh, you're not tall enough or, you know, your boobs are too big or they're too small or you... You know, you have acne. They, they really, you know, it was a lot. And that was, there was always something. And, and at my time when I was modeling, it's not like it is today where they retouch you. And, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, half the time people don't even look like their pictures that right. they have. But when I was doing it, the retouching was still a very new thing. So if they said, you know, if you had a pimple and you went on to a shoot, sometimes they might cancel you off of the job. I Luckily, that never happened to me, but I did struggle with acne at times. But then they would say, you know, oh, we're going to have to retouch and that's going to be expensive. And like, they would just say it, you know, in front of my face and make me feel bad Damn. about it. You know, um, if I had a scar, oh, we're going to have to retouch it. Oh, that's going to take forever and covering it up. And it was always something. They just pick you apart and, and they had no problem saying it to your face now how did that did did that affect you in any kind of anxiety or i mean it 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 was awful and that was one of the reasons why i ended up uh stopping modeling because it just came to a point where i was just tired of everything being based on you know my looks yeah yeah um you know it it was interesting because a lot of times they would say like oh it's about your personality and how you are, you know, right. when you come into the room. No, it's not. Nah, because nah. the second you turn around, they're picking you apart. They're, yeah. you know, oh, well, this isn't right. Oh, look at her, her, you know. I, I remember one time I was doing a shoot for a magazine cover, and and they were focusing on the earrings. And I remember the, I could hear, I think it was a stylist or somebody making fun of me because they said the holes on my ears were too big. from where the piercing was which it wasn't the case it's just on dark skin when you have a piercing sometimes the hole can look darker because you've got dark skin and i remember sitting there and i wanted to cry because they were just laughing and making fun like what are we going to do how are we going to fix can we even put her on the cover and i was like wow and i'm right here and i'm getting my makeup done and they're you know over here just talking away about me and i was just like this is now (laughs) how when did you decide to well, well let's talk about i want to talk about project 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 runway <laughs> yeah how was that project runway was fun that was interesting so you came in second uh-huh, is came that true in, yeah got, came in second they had a show called models of the runway that they right they i think they did maybe two seasons of that we were the first season of models of the runway so they they filmed us behind the scenes of what we were doing when we weren't on Project Runway doing that show. Um, that was really interesting. I made a lot of really close friends that I still have now on the show. I would never do a reality show again, but... What is... Wait, wait. Because I'm a big <laughs> mm-hmm. reality show watcher. Yeah. I watch s- stupid stuff all the time. Okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, 90 Day Fiance mm-hmm. and a oh, bunch yeah, of other stuff. One. <laughs> it's it's it just... I'm just into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I tell people, you know... I believe, because I believe, first of all, O.J. Simpson killed soap operas because mm-hmm. they were doing well when he came in mm-hmm. and all that trial came in, mm-hmm. the rating just died oh, really? for that okay. year. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's when I just about started General Hospital okay. about 55 years ago. 
So, um, but reality TV, I know people are going to think I'm crazy. I think it's, it's forced people to be better actors mm -hmm. in general because, yes, I know reality TV is set up, mm -hmm. but the emotions are real in between the lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they say to you, you guys do a talk thing here, okay, we're, we're setting up, mm -hmm. we're doing it. And we talk about something and we start fighting. It's real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and when you watch, you know, anything, document, I watch a lot of documentaries. When you see real people talking about real stuff, you, you got to, in order to match that, you have to be great. Your, your acting has to jump. Well, you see, like, you think about when you watch something like The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Yes. And, in, you know, they think they have this great, you know, chemistry with, with the other person and then that guy doesn't give him a rose or whatever and you see the, yes. the heartache and the emotion and they're crying and i'm like well you just met him an hour ago but you know but to get all of that, that out of you that's right it's something that has happened i think with so you. why do why wouldn't you do reality let me tell me how how it isn't you know on your side uh-huh what is it what was it like to do reality you know what, what it was i think um it was okay. So it's a psychological game, which was interesting because I, at the time when I did it, I had also been working with like, I think like a production company I kind of, I kind of knew the ins and out of how reality television yeah. worked. So when they, they do mind games with you. So when the producers really? were trying to do the mind games with me, they figured out very quickly that it didn't work for me. So they go off and they'll go talk with you know, one of the other models and, oh, well, such and such said this about you. No. You know? And then like, you know, such and such said this or whatever. And then they come back and then they put you in a room with the person and then all hell breaks loose and then people start fighting. Right. And that's what they do to manipulate the situation so they can get the drama. I realized that really quick. The producer's like, okay, we understand that you get this, but can you just play along? And, you know, if we're going to talk with somebody, just play along and, you know, go go with the flow yeah. and i'm like yeah for sure like i i know how this works i can you want to drum up ratings yeah. i know what to do yeah but it was interesting to see that kind of psychological you know push and pull or tug yeah. of war that they did to elicit these emotions out of people it's really interesting and i think the reason you know i, I wouldn't do it again was because it almost seemed kind of cruel yeah i me. get you it, yeah. is, it is kind of cruel because they're messing with people and a lot of and they really picked the most vulnerable people vulnerable yeah. people as well to really toy with of and course mess. and um and it was it was a little sad for me yeah you know to, but to you know that. Mm -hmm. movies do the same you know there's a story about the uh, the exorcist mm -hmm. you ever heard of yeah the exorcist? of course it traumatized the hell out of me i shouldn't have seen it when i was a young kid i shouldn't have either <laughs> it wasn't good <laughs> but, you know, the story where Ellen Bursting, she's talking to her daughter, who's a demon, mm -hmm. and she's the demon's supposed to uh, say something, and Ellen Bursting goes, but she's a great actress, she won an Academy Award, went back, and they had a harness on her. Mm -hmm. So they pulled her back, and it almost broke her back. And the director said, keep going, keep filming, keep uh -huh. filming, and she's screaming. Oh, gosh. So, you know... It happens, you know, it's mm -hmm. cruel, mm -hmm. and but sometimes the art of it for movies, let's say, not mm -hmm. for reality TV, yeah. but, but sometimes you got to push and poke the bear in order to get the, and the, but the emotion's real, right? Yeah. Oh, directors do it all the time yeah. to, to get yeah. that out of their, their actors, yeah. to get what they want out of, that, out of that scene. They wanted me to do two reality, one was MTV and the other one was something else, mm -hmm. and there's no way in hell I would do it now. Yeah. But you have to understand, at that time, this was about, with MTV came, this was about 15 years ago. I, my ego was out of control. So <laughs> when I heard MTV wanted it, I said, yeah. And I come home and I'm like, hey, gather around, kids. <laughs> they want to do a reality show. And my family said, Hell no. Mm -hmm. Maybe Joshua said, yeah, my son mm -hmm. was an actor. And, uh, and it would have been wrong for me to do it. So wrong. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have been able to take the pressure. Yeah. 
It's a lot. And it, they're on you all the time? They're on you all the time. And when you're in a confined space with, you know, a bunch of people, you, you know, everybody's personalities really start to work, you know, their nerves. Um, it's, it's a lot. I think, you know, you see this like with these shows like Beverly Hills Housewives or any yeah. of the Housewives franchises. Yeah. Not only that, but it really goes into your own, your real life, your personal life. Yeah. And that's when, you know, they start digging in to find things that they can sensationalize yeah. on the show. Of course. Nothing's safe. So anything, any little demons you may have, anything that you don't want out, if you're going on a reality show, be prepared that they will find it. You did something when you were yeah. eight. That Ooh. you don't remember. Oh, they're going to find it. They're going to figure it out, and they're going to use that to create the drama for their show. And thank, thank God I never did it then. <laughs> oh, what was he up to? Oh no, please. <laughs> um, you got a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. How the look? I was I barely graduated. I, I don't know. The truth is, I don't know if I did graduate because my my wife was looking in this book. And she goes, honey, I don't think you graduated because your name's not in here. <laughs> I said, I did, I did, I barely graduated, but I know, I, no, honey, it's not here. So how, man, you're just smart. I, um, yeah, I actually finished um, high school early. So I finished early. So I went and started taking courses at like a community college um because i think i was maybe 16 or something and i couldn't go to college yet um and so i did that and i thought i was gonna be i wanted to be a doctor so i was taking really? all these like kind of medical courses and you know working at a hospital as an intern and that's what i thought i was gonna do and then i was modeling at the same time um and then i went to college when i was 17 and that was really when my career started taking off as a model. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I'm going to be a model. Like, I've got my career. Dang. And I was like, I mean, I want to leave school. Like, I don't need to do this. You know, I'm, I'm already doing my thing. My mom was like, cute. But uh, you can do whatever you want to do when you get this college degree. I don't care, but you're not leaving school. So I'll, I was like, all right, I'm going to rush, rush through college then so I can get done with this quick so I can go off and, and be a model. So I finished college early as well um, and got my degree in media arts and and then, you know, took wow. off and did my thing. Yeah, I, I mean, because you, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And if you, you, know. you got something to fall back on, would have been nice. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to fall back on. So if it is nice to have that. And the transition to acting, how, how, how's that? Um, so yeah, that, that happened actually, uh, a few years into when I, when I was modeling, they had me, um, audition for Bold and the Beautiful and they would always have models come on there and it was like a speaking part and, and I booked a job and I was like, well, this is fun. I never thought, I had never even thought that was an option. Um, and I think, you know, when, as a model coming to LA, they kind of throw that yeah, and see if you can do course. it. So then I, I think I booked a movie, like a, a pretty decent sized role in a film. So then they were like, well, we're going to have to get you agents and things like that. And then um, I booked a, another show, which um, Josh, who's on our show, that plays Cody. Oh, Cody. Yeah, yeah. it was our first TV show. Um, really? That done. It was kind of like a telenovela, but it was... It was on a, a well, like all. yeah, I mean, it was, it was American version. It was a right. primetime soap, but, um, so that was really like kind of my first time really we were on set. I think we filmed it for like three months and, um, it was a close ended soap opera. So when that was done, they, you know, oh, yeah. on. it didn't, you know, so last. bold, the, the, you know, diamond. No, I don't. I just did. Her, I just, uh, she was on why well, interview her last, last week and she mm -hmm. was on both. She's on bold and beautiful. Oh, okay. She's uh, she was on the X Factor and a bunch of other stuff. But, okay. Uh, yeah, well, this was a, a very long. Time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and and then you myself. got you got the, uh, your role on GH. Yeah, yeah. So I did take some time off. I I had done quite. A, so I when I was doing acting, I was on the comedic side. So everything I was doing oh. was all like comedy films and television and things like that. So this really, besides that one little kind of telenovela type of show, is. 
my first foray into more of the the drama, the yeah, um, you know, more serious because everything I did was oh, so funny everything and was like funny and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was that's kind of my thing. Even some shows that I worked on um, this past year before um, coming on to GH, all you know, comedic type wow. shows, which I love, and like that was my thing. So it's kind of for me, you know, this transition and switch over to, to the d dramatic. Yeah, has been fun, definitely challenging, but you know, really. And you and I great. have been doing quite a quite a lot. Yeah, we, I can't. We can't talk about it, but <laughs> but it's been actually cool. Mm -hmm. It's a cool story. Yeah. I, I like the story. Yeah, it's. Uh, how can I say it? I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> I'll say it. It's just a, it's a little dark mm -hmm. that I li and I like it. Yeah, yeah. Because I ha I've been kind of playing a cowboy for two years. Mm -hmm. Cowboy Mike, Smike, Sonny, and Mike's put together a Smike. <laughs> it, so I like this kind of thing that that we've been doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the last two three weeks. I guess. Yeah. It's it's very cool. Yeah. Um, curious how it's going to develop and. What yeah, no, I think it's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. um, Boy, I think uh, anything else we can talk about? <laughs> oh, what's your feeling on marriage? I think uh, marriage is a great thing. Um, my parents have been married for 50 years, and I just adore them. I really look up to that. I think I, I'm not married myself. Um, I think it's, you know, it's definitely... I look at towards is it them. is it you need to meet the right dude I I think because I look at my parents relationship and I see that you know how they are I'm like well I just keep kind of searching for that even though I oh, know that it's that's a different it. time for a period yeah. that they came up in and I know it's almost impossible especially living in Los Angeles like yeah. I need to like be real with myself not have so much expectations on exactly on a partner um and how long in a relationship do you give it to get to that and then don't it doesn't happen and then you're out I, i'm like a three-year person <laughs> i like three years and then i'm done i think a lot too of relationships that i've had are um i know they're not the right person yeah. but i know that i'm not ready to be fully committed into a relationship because oh. i've always known like i want to make sure i have all of my ducks in a row and everything uh, for me set up so i can be the best i can be for the person i'm in a yeah, relationship with yeah. um i've i've you know been in a lot of relationships where you know people and myself included, and really needed to work on ourselves, and we didn't need to be in those relationships. I get, yeah. Oh, well, you know, it was always three years, and I was like, okay, time to move on. You know, <laughs> like that. That was cool. <laughs> three years, yeah. Yeah, three years. And you don't have any like feelings about it. It seems like like issues about it. Of getting, you're just that's you have your way, and that's it. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of girls, you know, that like you, you would think. Would have been married, have kids, but yeah. you don't seem to. You you you're very. I, I like that you're level headed like that. Yeah, and my mom was is that way. You no. know, she's a she's a businesswoman, and so I think a lot of that kind of was instilled in me as well. You know, like you don't have to settle. And, yes, and, and and all of that. But I mean, I also too what happened in relationships that I was in was that I always ended up giving so much of myself and so I would start to lose myself. So I would get so focused on, you know, the guy that I'm dating yeah. or whatever. I get so focused on them and, and their life and, and then making their life great. Oh, what issues do you have? Let's solve it. And I think that was a way for me to avoid my own issues mm. that I had, like by focusing on somebody else's and I would put all of that in there. But I started to notice that that was derailing my career and my life and, and the progression yeah. of, of my... You, you kind of lose yourself. I lost myself so many times. And so I think now where I'm at now, I, it just all of a sudden clicked. I think, um, you know, probably during the pandemic at some point, yeah. I was like, I'm not, I'm no longer going to feel bad. I think what it was is that I always, you know, felt, and, and I think this is a psychological thing from the, you know, modeling. I always, as a model 
kind of downplayed it. I didn't really like to tell people a lot because I felt that people judged me right away. Like, oh, you're a model. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they, there was always some negative connotations to that. And so I was always trying to pump up that. Well, I'm also a writer and I edit a yeah, magazine yeah, and right, I do right. this. And I always was kind of trying to lead with that because I wanted people to see that like, there's, you know, so much more to me. It took me a while to just accept that and be, you know, Love it. that modeling's a great thing and it's a job yeah. and it pays. But you know, from growing up, everybody, it's not a real job. It's not this. So I think to avoid that in relationships, I just, you know, focused on, on them to, you know, not really deal with it. my own issues. Yeah. Now I've, you know, came to a place, I think during the pandemic where I was like, you know, what? I'm not going to let people make me feel bad about, uh, you know, what it is that I do or whatever. I need to celebrate. You I own need it. To own it. I need to be proud of yes. it. And yes, I, you know, model or yes, I'm yes. Just whatever it is, because they're, they're all great. And those and are other people's insecurities that I had to. I love this. This the conversation is amazing. I love it. And I'll tell you why. And we'll, I'm, I'll conclude it. But it's funny how things work because it, I love that you own it now because here you are, we're talking, and I, because of what I went through as a model, mm -hmm. I ain't even saying I, I modeled, you know, you, and, <laughs> but because of what I went through, I, I think modeling is like, the, the, like you're on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. that, it's funny how I may, many people may not think that of me, mm -hmm. but when you failed in something, mm -hmm. you think something is so great. And, and, and not that I that I think modeling is the greatest thing in the world, but I, I think I look up to you a little bit mm -hmm. and, and you probably never even thought that I would, uh, you know, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest, I love it. but it's true. I yeah. swear to God, cause it's like, damn, mm -hmm. she was, she did what I, you know, couldn't do. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've done whatever, but I appreciate it. And, and this last, I, I have to say with Tanisha, I didn't, we, we haven't talked a lot, maybe not even, we, we work a, a quite a bit, but we don't talk a lot, and I'm so glad we did, because usually people who do state of mind, a lot of people I don't, you know, I, uh, Leslie Charleston, I, she's been on the show for 50 years, mm -hmm. we never had a conversation until here. Oh, wow, okay. We never had a, I've been on 30, she's been on 50, <laughs> and then here we had this, I started to get to know her, mm -hmm. and that's the, be the beauty of state of mind, so subscribe. Um, and that's, I, I got to know you and I, you're such a sweet person. Thank talented. you. Talented. So are you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> Under that tough exterior. <laughs> uh, soft, sweet heart. Right. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. Thank you for having me. This has Thank been you. really fun. All right. <laughs> We're out. We're out. <laughs>